What's up y'all, Matt Airy here with Bass University and I wanna to talk to you today about finding spawning fish with location baits. Using location baits to find spawning fish, not ones that you can actually visually see. Everybody can see the ones that are laying up this deep in the water. Um, I'm talking about ones that might just be just outside of that visual range. And you know, a couple different baits you know, that I use for locating those spawning fish, especially those big females that like to kind of hover out off the beds a little bit, are uh, a lot of a varieties of swim baits mainly. But the key with those location baits is being able to visually keep your eyes on that bait. And the reason I say that is because if you can't see that bait, you don't know if you're locating the fish or not unless that bait, that fish fully commits to it. Um, a lot of times when you're throwing bigger swim baits and things like that, you know, more often than not, let's be honest, those fish don't commit completely to those baits. So they'll just show themselves, they'll follow it, they'll bird dog it, they'll flash on it, whatever. Um, a couple different setups, you know, I do like some glide baits and things like that, um, but my number one setup, I'm gonna go through a glide bait setup here in a minute. My number one setup for locating spawning fish um, that you can't visually see is a, uh, is a Lunker Hunt fetch swim bait. It is a signature swim bait that I've actually designed. Um, the setup, real quick, it's a loose 7.4 medium heavy um, tour edition rod. It's got a loose TI reel, uh, 20 pound test P line tactical fluorocarbon. And here's the key. So I'm rigging, you, you can rig these swim baits with belly hooks and things like that to fish them a little bit deeper. But I'm actually rigging this thing on a weightless six alt super line Gamagatsu hook. You can actually even go to a seven alt um, EWG like monster worm style hook. And the reason it has to be a super line is because when you're fishing this bait weightless, okay, that is just enough hook to keep that thing to kill properly as opposed to rolling over on you. If you use something that's a lighter wire or smaller hook, um, it will not kill properly and it won't, won't, won't perform the way it's designed to perform. And I'm going to show you how to rig it here real quick and then I'll talk about the retrieve and the action and things like that. So this is the swim baits here. I'm gonna pull one out here. This is the common shiner color, one of my favorite kind of go-to color, just a natural little shiner look there. Um, if you take, take that hook, you're gonna go through the nose of the bait. There's actually a little, little, little hook insertion point there. You're gonna come down, come out underneath the lip there, just like so. This is basically you're just Texas rigging the bait. We designed this bait with a nice hook channel here, okay, so you can follow that hook channel. This is a six alt super line again. I'm gonna go down into the bait, Turn the hook around, okay. I'm gonna come right out the back, okay, just like so. And then I'm gonna skin hook it. Put the tip of the hook right back in the bait. So there it is, rigged weightless on a six alt super line hook. And what that allows this bait to do is it, is it allows to just get barely underneath the water column, six, eight, 10 inches, okay? And that is the key when you're using location baits for spawning fish. I wanna be able to always keep my eye on that bait during the retrieve. And, I, and I'll, give, I'll give you a quick example. So I was at the Mississippi River several years back fishing an FLW tour event. The smallmouth were spawning, but a lot of the places they were spawning, you could not see them. You could not visually see them. They might have been in a foot, foot and a half, two foot of water, but you couldn't visually see them. The water was too stained and too dirty. So I took this bait right here, this exact bait, and I went around and I was throwing it up on the bank and I was keeping, the, keep, keeping my boat position in the sunlight and everything to where I could visually see that bait this far underneath the surface. And again, the water was muddy, so I couldn't see those fish that were spawning a foot, two foot deep. I'd keep that thing just underneath the surface and those smallmouth would come up and boil on the bait. They wouldn't eat it, they wouldn't commit to it, but they would come up and boil on the bait. Well, I ended up using this bait to locate about 10 spawning smallmouth throughout practice and I marked them with waypoints. I went back the first day of the tournament and the first five that I went to that I thought were the biggest five, I caught with a little follow-up bait, which we'll talk about here in a minute, 